Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this beast is the Samsung Series 7. Despite some calling 2017's Notebook Odyssey the company's first gaming laptop, it was this that launched first, all the way back in 2012. It started life on the European market, but later made its way stateside with altered specs. The one we've got here is of course the European variant that originally sold for around £1400. I paid 280 for it last week. Now I wouldn't call this a laptop as much as I would a portable desktop PC because it's absolutely huge and carrying it around doesn't feel too dissimilar weight wise from carting about a traditional tower. Seriously. At 2 inches thick though, well it's no surprise. At a time when other companies began trying to implement slimmer designs, it's clear that Samsung didn't get the memo, or they just didn't care. After all, if it looks like a beast on the outside, it surely must be a beast on the inside too, right? Featuring a quad-core 8-threaded i7-2670QM, AMD Radeon HD 6970M graphics and 8GB of RAM, as well as a 120GB SSD, which was likely a recent user upgrade, and a 1TB hard drive, this machine was certainly geared toward those who wanted a top-notch portable gaming experience. The inclusion of a Blu-ray drive also helped solidify its intentions as the ultimate on-the-go entertainment system. The US version has a slightly different i7, as well as an NVIDIA GTX 675M GPU instead. So let's talk about the aesthetics a little more before we get to the gaming side of things, because there's a lot of cool stuff going on here. Here on the edge of the hinge we have a touch control panel for volume, Wi-Fi and backlighting, as well as this turbo button which actually isn't a button at all. That ties in with this. Turning this dial will introduce a few changes represented by a different performance mode. Green mode, library, balanced and my favourite, gaming. The modes are quite self-explanatory with balanced keeping things well balanced, green keeping the power consumption low, library disabling the fans and gaming doing this. That makes me feel a little bit like James Bond every time. Unfortunately a lot of reviewers didn't feel the same and this gimmick was slated by some. After all, the gaming mode's intentions are good with Turbo Boost being activated for the processor, but the whole light show that comes with it wasn't always appreciated. I think it's quite cool really because you get some nice keyboard lights and a couple of quickly accessible options to disable the mousepad during gaming. I'm a sucker for gimmicks though. So using this thing is a pleasure. The keyboard feels great in the 17 inch 1920 by 1080-120Hz display features rich deep colours that really pop. The speakers also do a very loud job, which doesn't necessarily mean they are good, they are just some of the loudest speakers I've ever heard. If we fire up Cinebench R15, you'll see that the aging i7 still holds its own fairly well, and you'll have no trouble with everyday tasks even today. This chip is similar in performance to a desktop Core i5-3450, which itself is okay for a nice budget desktop setup. The single core result puts this in close proximity to an i7-950, an old school chip but one that can still handle itself fairly well in modern situations. The HD6970 GPU on the other hand has 2 gigs of GDDR5, a clock speed of 680MHz and a 900MHz memory clock with 960 shaders. This mobile GPU was also used in Apple Macs of the time too. An irrelevant but perhaps mildly interesting piece of information there. So what can it do in terms of gaming? Well, unfortunately there will be no multiplayer games in the benchmarks today just to let you know now because my internet went down last night. It's returned today but it might as well be non-existent. I say down but it's working a little bit though at this point Fred Flintstone probably had a faster connection than me. It also would have been quicker to post this video to YouTube via Parcel Force than it would be via the internet. So yeah, you can sort of tell what I'm working with. I uploaded this video from my phone. Anyway, onto the single player gameplay benchmarks. So in theory, this is a laptop that should be able to play all modern games, but in reality, well, that's not exactly the case. Firing up Battlefield 5 and the first thing the game says is that the drivers aren't supported. This is the 
latest version of AMD's Catalyst software we have installed with this mobile Radeon card here and unfortunately the game doesn't really agree with it. I started it up and we couldn't really get much further than this screen. I don't know why but it's like the keyboard just decided to deactivate itself and the mouse. The game just jammed here every time. Crisis also seemed to be incompatible with this hardware. Now I thought the same was going to happen with Far Cry New Dawn in terms of how well it didn't work but despite it taking ages to load and I mean really quite a long time we were probably at the splash screen for three minutes and then it took another two or three minutes to load up the benchmark. Once that was done I fired up the benchmark at 1080p with the low in-game settings and we saw around 20 frames per second. Once again with this laptop we're seeing a case of the GPU aging worse than the CPU. The i7 really isn't being utilised all that much in a lot of cases but the GPU, the 6970M, does struggle quite a bit. I often find that's the case with laptop CPUs. They are capable for a very long time but graphics hardware ages quicker a lot like desktop versions as well. Dirt Rally 2 always seems to be the saving grace in these situations here at 1080p with the very low preset we were seeing pretty nice frame rates here despite the aging hardware. I think these two pieces of hardware did quite a good job in dirt it's not the best experience in the world you can probably run it at medium if you are happy with 30 frames per second and a few drops below probably quite a few drops below but very low or low seems to be the best graphical settings for this title and it's really not that bad providing you don't mind the graphical downgrade now we actually ran the witcher 3 at 720p with the medium preset all round i wanted to avoid low because this game looks absolutely stunning and on this display more so it's a 120 hertz panel and the colors of this thing really do pop i mean playing the witcher 3 on this looks better than it does on my dell gaming monitor it looks better than it does on my 4k tv um, in terms of how the colors and the saturation works this is really an impressive display here this laptop still has that going for it even if it's not that capable anymore Fallout 4's Wasteland also looked absolutely fantastic as well. The colours were a bit more dull in Fallout 4, but everything still seems to stand out very nicely. Despite the fact we were hitting around 30 to 40 frames per second for the most part, although we were able to run this one at 1080p, albeit with the low preset, we still had the highest anti-aliasing enabled because switching to FXAA really does give you a lot of jagged lines everywhere. Finally, Grand Theft Auto 5, with a mixture of high, very high, and normal settings, ran with at least 30 frames per second too. Now, the main thing here was to keep the shadows at normal and turn the anisotropic filtering down to times 4 instead of times 16, which I initially tried. That will ensure things continue to run relatively smoothly in GTA 5. The map's rather large, and of course, it will differ. The performance of that is depending on where you are, but for the most part, well, it was a fairly decent experience. If you want 60 FPS, then I'd advise 720p with all low settings across the board. So this has been the Samsung 7 Series Gamer Laptop. The i7 in this thing still holds up pretty well. I'll have to look into it a little bit more as to whether the GPU can be upgraded. I think it can be, as well as the RAM, of course. And I think those two things would help to really improve the performance. Because as I say, the four cores and eight threads of the Core i7 are still going very strong. And if you are looking for a laptop and it's got one of those inside, then it would be a good purchase. Just don't expect to play too many modern titles if it features a GPU like the 6970M. All in all though, the powerful processor combined with the gorgeous display and the very nice feeling keyboard with the game mode gimmick makes this thing still worth purchasing in my opinion if you're looking for a used laptop. If you can find it for under £300 dollars or euros then I think it's still a decent enough buy because it's still better than a lot of new laptops that you get at that price especially ones that feature things like a Celeron or Pentium though if you can find one close to that that features a Ryzen APU then obviously that would be the one to go for. With all that said and done well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed checking out this Samsung laptop. If you did, leave a like on it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. 
and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.